Hello and welcome to the third lecture on the binomial theorem. In this lecture, we'll look at some examples where the binomial theorem uh, is applied, and we'll, in the subsequent lectures as well, we'll look at some of the applications of binomial theorem and some of the identities which can be derived based on the binomial theorem. So, as you may recall, the binomial theorem uh, is given as follows: We have x plus y power n can be uh, written as summation r equal to 0 to n, n c r, x power n minus r, y power r. So a typical question which you might expect in an exam based on the binomial theorem is as follows. Um, so we want to find the coefficient of the first case is x squared y cube in x plus y whole power phi. So a way to tackle this question is as follows. You can just match the term you're required to find uh, with the general term of the binomial expansion. So you could, in this case, we have n equals phi, since we have x plus y power phi, and we have n minus r equals 2 since we have x squared and we have r equals 3 since we have y cubed. And so you see that this system of linear equations is a consistent system with the solution n equals phi and r equals 3. And so the coefficient of x squared y cubed in the binomial expansion of x plus y power phi is given as phi c 3, which is nothing but phi factorial divided by phi minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. And this is nothing but 10. If you evaluate it, it will come out to be 10. And so this is a typical example problem you might face in an exam situation. Another simple application of the binomial theorem uh, can be phrased as this question. Uh, you're asked to find now the coefficient of x squared y squared in x plus y power phi. Well, for those of you who can directly see that the coefficient is 0, uh, well done. Uh, you, you could directly see that the coefficient is 0 based on your intuition. But to, uh, to derive it in a more systematic manner, uh, we can consider, again, a similar approach as we, as we had in the first example. Uh, again, we have n equals phi. Uh, we want n minus r, which is the power of r to be power of x, sorry, to be 2. And we want r, uh, which is the power of y, to be 2. And now we know that this system of linear equations is an inconsistent system. That is, there is no solution to the system of linear equations. And so this implies that the coefficient of x squared y squared is 0. Also note that in general, uh, we will have the power of x plus the power of y adding up to n, which is phi in this case. And so since the power of x plus the power of y does not add up to phi, for this example, uh, we would expect the coefficient to be 0. Now let's look at a third example. This one is a more. Uh, complicated example than the previous two. Um, so here you're asked to find the coefficient of x power 11 in 2x squared plus x minus 3 whole power 6. So there are many ways to approach this problem. Uh, there's not a single uh, good way to approach this. But uh, let's see uh, where the different ways get us. So you can, let's look at three possible ways to approach this. Uh, the first possible way is you have 2x squared plus x minus 3, the whole power 6. And you consider the binomial expansion of this term, where you consider this to be uh, your x in your uh, binomial expansion formula. And you consider this to be uh, your sort of y. And you write the binomial expansion of x minus y power n. The second approach 
could be uh, writing this expansion as follows. Uh, you can write it as 2x square plus x minus 3 whole power 6. And you consider 2x squared to be your x in your binomial expansion. And you consider x minus 3 to be your y in your binomial expansion. And you can uh, write this, write the binomial expansion of x plus y power n to find the coefficient of x power 11. A third possibility is to factorize 2x squared plus x minus 3. And uh, you can check that a factorization is x minus 1. Uh, it's x minus 1 times 2x plus 3. And you have this term whole power 6. And you would like to find uh, the coefficient of x power 11 uh, in this expansion. So let's see where these three uh, different uh, ways lead us. So let's first try the first approach. So the first approach, uh, you would want to find the coefficient of x power 11 uh, in 2x squared plus x minus 3 whole power 6. Uh, so as a shorthand, I'm going to write uh, CEO of x power 11 in 2x squared plus x minus 3 whole power 6, where this represents that I'm looking for the coefficient of x power 11 uh, in that term. So uh, if you write out a general term of the binomial expansion of 2x squared plus x minus 3 whole power 6 by grouping the terms in this way, uh, you would get the general term to be uh, 6cr 2x squared plus x power 6 minus r and minus 3 power r. So this is the general term in the expansion of uh, 2x squared plus x minus 3 whole power 6. Uh, so you want to form, uh, you're looking at the coefficient of x power 11 in this expansion. And you, so you want to form x power 11 from this general term. So if you factorize that term, you would get, you'd want to form x power 11 from 6cr uh, x power 6 minus r. 2x plus 1 power 6 minus r times minus 3 power r. So you'd want to form x power 11 from this term. And note that this already gives you x power 6 minus r. And you'd want to form the remaining thing from this term. So for r equals 0, uh, this, this term looks as follows. It is 6c0 x power 6. Uh, 2x plus 1 power 6 times minus 3 uh, power 0. For r equals 1, the term looks like 6c1, x power 5, uh, 2x plus 1 power 5, uh, minus 3 power 1. Uh, so for r equals 1 and greater r greater than or equal to 1, you notice that you cannot form x power 11 uh, from these two terms, since this gives you at most x power phi, and the leading coefficient is going to be at most x power phi. So the only uh, case in which you can form x power 11 is from r equals 0. So if you want to form x power 11 from r equals 0, you already have x power 6 here. So you would want to form x power phi from 2x plus 1 power 6. So you are essentially looking at the coefficient of uh, x power phi in 2x plus 1 power 6. And this can be easily obtained by an application of the binomial theorem. So the coefficient of x power phi uh, in 2x plus 1 power 6 is nothing but 6c1, uh, 2 power 6 minus 1 times 1 power 1. And this is nothing but 192. Right. Uh, so if you s plug this back in, into this expression, uh, we have the coefficient of x power 11 in 2x squared plus x minus 3 whole power 6 is 6c0 uh, times 1 
we have 1 here, and from here we have 192, and from here we have 1. And this is nothing but 192. This, this is the result we seek. So this is uh, one way of getting at the result, and this is the first way we looked at. So now let's look at option C. We'll skip option B for now, and let's look at option C. So look at option C. We had, uh, we wanted the coefficient of x power 11 uh, in x minus 1 power 6 times 2x plus 3 power 6. So note that now you have product of two, uh, two power terms, and you, you have to form x power 11 from uh, the combination of these two terms. So there are two possible ways. So, so notice that the leading coefficient of x in both of these terms is x power 6, and then you have x power 5 uh, as the second term, and so on. So to form x power 11 from this product, uh, you could either form uh, x power 6 from this, and x power 5 from the second term, or you could form x power 5 from the first term and x power 6 from the second term. So there are these two possible ways of doing this. So the first possible way is, uh, so the coefficient of x power 11 in x minus 1 power 6 times uh, 2x plus 3 power 6 uh, is nothing but the coefficient of x power 6 in x minus 1 power 6 times the coefficient of x power 5 in 2x plus 3 power 6 plus the coefficient of x power 5 in x minus 1 power 6 times the coefficient of x power 6 in 2x plus 3 power 6. So again, these are the two possible ways in which you can form x power 11 uh, from this product. So the first expression is nothing but, so the coefficient of x power 6 in x minus 1 power 6, again from the binomial theorem, is obtained as uh, 6c0. 1 power 6 minus 0 times minus 1 power 0. And the coefficient of x power 5 in this expression, again from the binomial theorem, is obtained as 6c1, uh, 2 times 2 power 6 minus 1 times 3 power 1. So that's the first uh, uh, term in this summation. The second term in the summation is, again, given by so you want the coefficient of x power 5 in x minus 1 power 6. Again, from the binomial theorem, it is 6c1, 1 power, 1 power 6 minus 1, minus 1 power 1. And the second term is given by coefficient of x power 6 in 2x plus 3 power 6. And that's nothing but 6c0, 2 power 6 minus 0 times 3 power 0. So you can evaluate this. Uh, the sum as follows. So the first sum is nothing but 1 times 1 times 1. And the second term here is uh, 6 times 2 power 5 times 3. And the third term here is nothing but 6 times 1 times minus 1. And the last term is nothing but 1 times 2 power 6 times 1. So if you factorize this, um, you would get 6 times uh, 2 power 5 times 3 minus 2. And that is nothing but 6 times 2 power 5, and that is 192. So once again, we obtain that the coefficient of x power 11 in 2x squared plus x minus 3 whole power 6 is 192. So the third approach is quite similar to the first two approches. Uh, that is, part 2 is quite similar. 
Uh, it's actually much more easier uh, than part three. Uh, so, sorry, it's part B, as I marked it earlier. Uh, so you wanted to write the expansion as 2x squared plus x minus 3 whole power 6. And again, if you consider a general term, you'd have 6cr 2x squared power 6 minus r, x minus 3 power r. Again, I, I won't go into the details for this part. You can work it out on your own. But you, you notice that the only relevant term corresponds to r equals 0. So uh, sorry, the only relevant term corresponds to r equals 1, not r equals 0. So then you would get an x power 10 from this, and you would get an x power 1 from this, and that's going to give you, uh, that's going to give you x power 11. Uh, because in other cases, you would either exceed x power 11, or you cannot make x power 11. So the only relevant term is an r equals 1. Uh, so that's it for this lecture. Uh, in the next lecture, we will look at more examples uh, of the application of the binomial theorem. I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and thank you for your attention.